Tov, Chavarim, I'm Stephen Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're going to be covering a range of subjects tonight. Uh, here, we are looking at uh, a live broadcast with Josh Ernest here. Let me take you right to this here. Uh, just broke just moments ago. The effort that was undertaken by the Russians to interfere with and even undermine the basics of American democracy. And the intelligence community takes that quite seriously, and that was evident from the extraordinary statement that they issued back in October, uh, a month before the election, uh, indicating that they had concluded with high confidence, unanimously, that Russia had undertaken this effort, and that this was an effort that was uh, could only have been directed from the highest levels of the Russian government. Uh, I think you can discern the seriousness with which we take this issue uh, by taking a close uh, Josh is going to stay here just a second or two longer in this uh, answering the question there that uh, President Barack Obama at the very moment of this live broadcast and uh, I, I'm not sure if it's still going on. No, it's actually already ended as of now. Uh, I was catching it while it was still live here. <clears throat> as you can see, just concluded a moment ago there with Josh Ernest there. Josh uh, saying that President Barack Obama actually has in his hand the very report that he requested before January the 20th of 2017 from the, uh, from the intelligence community to let him know if indeed Russia was or was not involved in the hacking of the uh, DNC. Uh, and of course they have concluded that they were. And uh, he is meeting with his national security team as we speak now. And even as Josh Ernest said, while he was in this live press briefing here, that they were meeting with the national security team. Uh, that's what Josh says there. It's very serious uh, for this because uh, something I had already put together before coming to the broadcast here. Let me see if I can just quickly uh, find the one I want. Yes, here. I mentioned this a few days ago, in fact. Uh, U.S. Uh, President Obama has deployed U.S. Special Forces troops along Lithuania's border with aggressive Russia. Tensions between Washington and the Kremlin have reached a Cold War levels. Amid reports, Vladimir P Putin is deploying nuke-ready missiles in the Russian province of Kaliningrad, which borders Poland, Belarus, and Lithuania. You know, it was funny, though. That was months ago that that was deployed. What about China deploying their uh, their their nuclear capable uh, 41 uh, solid rocket uh, booster there in northeastern China? And by the way, speaking about China, uh, India, by the way, is very concerned that China and Pakistan may actually go to war with India in the very near future. A very big fear that they are facing right now. I don't actually have the information pulled up on that. Uh, and speaking of Obama doing this, I know there was a big issue that came out, um, and uh, I had, uh, in fact, I pulled up just to see what was going on on this issue here about the United States having all of its aircraft carriers inside, in port in the United States, all 10 of them from what I can understand about that. Seth Archer, uh, I'd seen his uh, clip on that, and I know, I don't know if Seth took it from Fox News or whatever, but he had posted that, uh, uh, you know, Seth, we've had many chats before together um, and so I'd made a comment on there asking what the source was which I did find it Fox News gave it. of course Infowars had given it and I'd seen these already but what really kind of baffled me just a little bit was that with all the reports that all the US uh, 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 aircraft carriers were in port then this article comes out on January the 3rd a couple of days ago US Navy to deploy USS Carl Vincent in the a in Asia it says US Navy will deploy a third Nimitz class uh, supercarrier USS Carl Vincent uh, strike group in Asia to add to the fleet of two carriers already patrolling in the South China Sea but they're already patrolling in the South China Sea and of course they didn't have time to get there over the last couple of days that quick you must wonder then, were, was Fox's port report really correct? Were all 10 of the ships actually in port? I just, <clears throat> I don't know. Now I do know though that even Fox had clarified that there would be, there were no ships in the Middle East right now, none in the Persian Gulf, none in the Mediterranean, no aircraft carriers in this region whatsoever. And there was a very interesting man, uh, let me just see if I can pull this up quickly for you guys that uh, a friend of mine sent me on Facebook here. They sent me a message here 
with a, uh, I think it was uh, Sister Edith Porter, in fact. Yes, it was. It was Sister Edith Porter. Well, God bless you, Sister, for sending this to me here. And, you know, guys, one thing, let me just say, I get tons and tons and tons of, of, of emails and, and reports and stuff and, and text and things, and I do appreciate Is what people send. But uh, I just just so you're aware too, guys, it's it's it is very difficult at this point now in answering everything that comes in, and we're trying to to find ways to deal with that uh, in order to be able to, to 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 reach out to everyone that we possibly can. This man right here, Gabor uh, Zona, uh, actually he was talking about the naval carriers in port. I want to just pray just briefly what he says here. I found it very interesting. Try to assist an armed uh, frontal attack <clears throat> by Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia. Now, who the hell knows? What he's saying here That's in his report not, here is that not it's not that the U.S. is in danger for having all the all the aircraft carriers in base. It's Israel that becomes vulnerable. Listen to what he says here. That's sort of what I think, and I, God, I hope I'm wrong. What else makes any sense? We don't have a single aircraft carrier to protect Israel. They're all here. I thought he had a very good, uh, very good point right there, and that's something, especially in light of the article here of the U.S. Navy sending another aircraft carrier to the uh, the Asian coast there with China. Of course, there's been, you know, the U.S. is building up a, a base there on an island as well in the South China Sea now. Uh, and Russia, or excuse me, China saying that it's going to be an arms race if this starts happening. And they're saying there's already two aircraft carriers there. But in that case, then, maybe Fox made a mistake on that. I, I'm not saying they did or did not. Just in light of the article here on Navy, uh, NavalTechnology.com, it appears that there were still two ships out. So maybe eight were in port and two were still out in Asia, but nothing, though, in the, uh, the Middle East. And so there again, uh, this, this uh, man here, uh, I appreciate his, his article here, Mr. Uh, Gabor Zolna, saying that no ships are there to protect Israel. In that case, he would definitely be right on that. Let me get into something, though, that's very troubling right now. Uh, and that is the Al Monitor. Israel Pulse uh, is, is uh, speaking about Netanyahu again today. Uh, the special investigators, police uh, came again to Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, really grilling him on the investigation. And he has admitted that he has taken gifts. But as he says, they are trifle compared to what most people would think. And of course, his attorney is saying that they do not fall under the, uh, the category of bribery. But uh, it certainly seems to me that what they are doing is they are definitely working uh, on trying to, to break him. Uh, and I believe this is uh, his attorney here, Attorney Yaakov uh, Weinarf of Channel 2 meets the press on November 26, 6, 2016. Uh, this here, though, the picture right here, this is uh, Manda, uh, excuse me, Mandeblit, I can't see, I, I had to get a pair of over-the-counter glasses there waiting for my own glasses to be uh, re reordered there. So actually my sight got worse, I found that. I had to have a new eye test, so now I'm wearing 400s is what I have to wear. Ooh, makes it rough on reading. Uh, so anyway, but uh, this is the guy right here, though, that, that seems to be the one that is after Prime Minister Netanyahu. And, of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying that it is a setup. He said this to the Likud party, and he's building a, a support amongst his constituents as a result. And it does look like it is a witch hunt, uh, without a doubt. Uh, but, you know, I cannot help but think of the, the scriptural passages I shared with you the other day from Daniel chapter 11 there. I think it's verse 26 there where it speaks about that those that eat at your table, they will destroy him. And uh, that really does uh, concern me that that may be the case. I mean, there's, they're not saying that there's not things that Prime Minister Netanyahu has done that has not been up and up. I do agree with that. Uh, but I think he's also tried to have Israel's best interest at heart. But, of course, ever since he took hands with uh, uh, Prime Minister, excuse me, with uh, Pope Francis, that has always been a concern to me. 
And uh, speaking of Pope Francis, one thing, let me just share this with you before I come back. I'm going to come back here to Psalm 83. But uh, that's another thing, biblically speaking, that is very concerning to me and Daniel. It's right after we're looking at the prophecy that I believe that does apply here to Netanyahu. Having those that eat at his own table will destroy him. It says, Yea, they that eat of his food shall destroy him, and his army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. You know, this is all dealing with this UN resolution that's coming up. We're going to go to Psalm 83 in just a minute about that too, because that's something that some people get wrong. They call it a Psalm 83 war. Psalm 83 is not a war. It is a prelude to the war. It is a confederacy before the war. But I believe it follows afterwards. Now, let's look at this in verse 27. And as for both these kings, their hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for the end remaineth yet for the time appointed. Now, if the king of the north is the Pope of Rome, they've definitely sat at one table many times. And no doubt, both have lied to one another, making promises and Exchange for this or exchange for that. You want to talk about somebody taking bribes, maybe they should do an investigation in the Vatican. Might be a good place to start. Not that the Pope takes money or anything like that. He just wants Jerusalem. There's the bribe right there. Well, I guess that happened back in 1947, so I don't want to blame that on Pope Francis. It's not his fault. 1947, it was pretty obvious whoever was a Pope at that time Maybe that was Pope John Paul the 26th, if I'm not mistaken there. Uh, he got the bribe. No, it couldn't have been him either. It was even further back than that. Um, gosh, we're back all the way. Pope Pius XII, I believe it is, in 1947, when the, uh, the, the new uh, UN Resolution uh, 181, it was, that was uh, Pope Pius the uh, 12th or 11th, whichever number that is. Anyway... I uh, just wanted to share that with you, though, that the lies will be told at one table. Now, this quickly, I want to, uh, in light of what is going on in Israel with this uh, resolution coming up, let's take and let's run over to Psalm 83. I did, it, uh, and I'll try to remember to put in the comment below, I'll try to remember to put the, uh, the actual video that I did a couple of years ago about Psalm 83. I've done several of them on Psalms 83 because... It's just something that I have re recognized that Psalm 83 is not a war. It is Israel crying out to the Lord to protect them because the enemies have gathered against them. All right, let's take a look at this. A song, uh, a psalm of Asaph. O God, keep thou not silence, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. So see, Israel is crying out to God in defense because of what's coming upon them. For lo, thine enemies are in an uproar, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. In other words, they appointed a leader, Nasu Rosh. They hold crafty converse against thy people and take counsel against thy treasured ones. See, Al Amcha, Ya Remu Sod. See? And, of course, the al Tsefonecha is the, the treasured ones, that counsel that they take against them. The treasured ones are actually, the word treasured is a very bad translation right there. Tsefonecha, Tsefon, is hidden ones. They're taking counsel against thy hidden ones. Hmm. I've wondered that to be the two witnesses. I remember Chuck Missler asking me that years ago, who did I think the hidden ones were speaking of there in Psalm 83. Now, I've always kind of believed it was the two witnesses because if they're hidden, then they're coming back. And the only way they would take counsel is to, what are we going to do with them? And of course, the head there, the Pope of Rome happens to be the head of this. If he's the leader, the head, then that would make a lot more sense. Amru lechu. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. See? that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. That's the, only, that's the best way to do it. And of course, again, they're taking that. It says, for they have consulted together with one consent against thee, do they make a covenant? There's your 
UN resolution once again, a covenant they've made against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites and Moab and the Hagarenes, Edom of course being the Vatican, the Romans of today, the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarenes, your Arab nations and also Gentile nations, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek and Philistia and with the inhabitants of Tyre. Verse 9 though is probably the biggest clincher of all in my opinion. Assyria also is joined with them. They have been an arm to the children of Lot, Selah. Do thou unto them as unto Midian, and as to Caesarea, and to Jabin, and to the brook of Kishon. So Israel's crying out for mercy. We see that when Netanyahu, if the, if the prophecy in, in Daniel 11, and I can't say without 100% certainty that it does apply to Netanyahu, but if he is destroyed by this investigation that is going on now, remember Ehud Barak is in prison right now for bribery charges, a former prime minister of Israel, serving a prison sentence. If they successfully destroy Netanyahu with this latest allegation, they will no doubt then put someone in his place that will be 100% for a two-state solution. Because then the Likud party would lose credibility and the people of Israel. Not only would they not support, maybe, but according to the prophecy of Daniel, once that one is destroyed by the one that eats at his own table, guess what happens next? That's right. Israel will be swept over and many shall fall down slain. A war will strike Israel. And even who it wasn't it the uh, the Sanhedrin recently stated that. If they divide Israel, it'll be the start of World War III. Makes you wonder what's going on, doesn't it? So Assyria, though, is also joined with them. They have been an arm to the children of Lot. Hmm. That's modern-day Syria, northwest Iraq. That kind of tells me that Syria and Iraq, especially Syria, Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, no doubt will actually have a representative there when that time comes. I actually got a question out to a good friend of mine that's close to Assad to see if Syria will be sending a representative as part of the 70 nations that are gathered against Israel. If you happen to come across that and know that for a fact, send that to me because and I think the reason why it says here, Assyria also is joined with them. And that's what you have in Hebrew. Gam Asuru. Also Syria. The word Gam is also means also in Hebrew. Gam Asuru. Nila a im, uh, uh, Imam. They're also. It's like, it was almost like it was maybe wasn't going to be a possibility. Why would Isaiah, excuse me, Psalm, David in the Psalm, make that type of prophecy? Could it be because, whether he knew it or not, God knew, that Syria would be so bogged down in a civil war, and not to mention not long maybe after this UN resolution, Damascus will be a ruinous heap. Maybe Prime Minister Netanyahu's threat or support or whatever he meant by the Israeli army is ready to enter into Syria, that might be as a result of this UN resolution. He might be willing to take down Damascus as a result of it. But I don't think it'll happen until Assyria is part of this UN resolution, 70 nations coming against Israel, happening January 15th. We will be there to do our best to cover what parts of this that we can ourselves so that you can see what's going on from Paris, France. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Paris,